Hi, welcome to the program, Faith for Every Nation. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran, and I'm Pastor Mark and Trina's daughter. We're so glad to have you joining us here on the program today. My parents have been discussing the spirit of faith, and I know that you will enjoy it. They've been doing it every single day. Let's get right into the program. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. So in 2 Corinthians 4.13, mm -hmm. where he says, we having the same identical mm -hmm. spirit of faith. Now, I like it when he says the spirit of faith, the spirit of faith, because sometimes people will talk about the spirit of St. Louis, you know. What mm -hmm. are they really talking about? Yeah. They're really talking about what you would call uh, a pioneer spirit mm -hmm. where people were launched from there and, and new inventions and new discoveries and Lewis and Clark going out. And so the spirit of faith literally is a pioneer spirit. By pioneer, a pioneer is someone who is constantly pressing for new territory. Constantly pressing for new territory. And a pioneer is someone who prepares the way for others who will follow. Amen. And so the spirit of faith, so we say there's three kinds of people, pioneers, settlers, and museum keepers. <laughs> so a museum keeper is someone who's just content to dust off the memories of the past and look mm -hmm. at the pictures. Mm -hmm. Joshua and Caleb were not museum keepers. The Apostle Paul was not a museum keeper. Though we are thankful for the blessings of God in the past, mm -hmm. they were pressing at 80 years old. Our best blessings are coming right now. We're pressing for that and we are well able to possess and the land. They were not afraid of challenge. They were not afraid of a difficulty. They uh, looked it in the mm -hmm. face. You know, Paul said right there in that chapter, we're pressed, we're driven to despair, we're all these things. But the purpose, the call that he had to take the gospel, to bring the good news of Jesus, uh -huh. life changing, healing power hmm. to his generation that, was, that drove him past wow. the difficulty, past the pain to the purpose and with, he fulfilled it. With such confidence. Mm -hmm. So I like to say it this way, that the spirit of faith, your cause yeah. must be clear and your cause must be more important to you than your comfort. Say that again. Your cause mm -hmm. are, as Psalmist David said, um, God's righteous cause are when David Face Goliath, that's what he said. Is there not a cause? God's righteous cause. In other words, people have all kinds of causes in the world and, and they're fighting for this and fighting for that. But with Paul, his cause was the gospel of Christ. There can be no other cause greater than this one cause, and that is my whole life and my resources are literally made available to the teaching, the preaching, the propagation, the distribution of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What happened on the cross, the death and the resurrection of Christ is the answer in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus for every generation. So you cannot sign up for 38 different causes. <laughs> no. You got one main purpose or cause. So your cause must be so clear that you're not distracted by too many other causes. That's true. My cause going into every situation 
is to magnify Jesus. He is the answer. He's the redeemer. He's the only one that can change hearts and lives. And so Jesus is Lord and the blood of Jesus, the power of the cross, what happened on the cross and the resurrection of Christ. That's the center of the gospel, the good news. So in a generation of bad news, we got the good news that Jesus is Lord. And he's not just the answer. He is the only answer. He is the only answer. <laughs> the government the only... don't have the answer. No. Uh, education don't have the answer. Jesus Christ is Lord. And so that's your cause. So your cause must be greater than your comfort. Amen. And your purpose, and Paul called it the eternal purpose mm -hmm. and the purpose of God for his life. In other words, the spirit of faith is necessary, not just to get the blessings of God, though the blessings of God belong to us, but the spirit of faith is necessary to fulfill your destiny and to do the will of God. Our God would not design a plan for your life that did not require the Amen. spirit of faith. God has a plan for your life. Yeah. So it takes a spirit of faith, not just to get the blessing, but to follow the plan of God. It takes faith to go where God tells you to go, and it takes faith to stay where he told you to stay. Amen. In the midst of adversity. Mm -hmm. And so your cause must be greater than your comfort, and your purpose must be greater than your pleasure. And it says in Hebrews 11 that <clears throat> Moses, by faith, chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You know, I just feel <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is stirring people up uh, today, this week. This is a real pivotal time for our, our nation, uh, for the world. Uh, so many people distraught, so many people in upheaval cities, in upheaval, what are we going to do, you know? But I believe the answer, like you said, is Jesus. The answer is in people with a spirit of faith, mm. no matter where you are. And there's a call that's in people that will cause them to rise up and see the situation, but have the answer yeah. and, and step out mm. and kill some giants. Lead the way like Joshua. Wow. Break through some big <coughs> city walls, so to speak, wow. and kill some giants of hatred and, and anger. anger. Uh, and uh, there's so much injustice in this world, and what happened in our nation is just unspeakable. And uh, the, the gentleman, uh, George Floyd, that was um, just killed um, by a uh, police officer, all on video, and I was just enraged and so angry that, that that would happen. And if you study something about George Floyd, I mean, you find out that he was a Christian, that he loved the Lord, that he actually helped minister in the inner cities. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not saying that he never did anything wrong, but the, all of us have done stuff that is wrong. But he was a man that had faith in God, in the gospel of Christ, and uh, here was killed by a police officer. And you can see a, a racial problem here, and then you can see just the devil involved and hatred, and then it incites uh, so much other stuff. But the only cure for, wow, think about what would happen if, if a church choir went out and sang right in the middle of one of these riots. Well, I, now you say that's crazy, but that's what happened <laughs> in Second Chronicles 20. Yes. I mean, they're surrounded by three armies and they got the singers going out and begin to praise God and the enemies were defeated while they were, I call that a spirit of faith. It's a spirit of faith. And it was a spirit of faith for and the Mi <laughs> Miami police people. Uh, they got down on their knees. The police officers got down on their knees and asked for, for prayer and forgiveness. Wow. And then the people began to pray for them. In other words, we, we need to pray for our policemen, for our, for our government and for our leaders. And um, in America, uh, the power of the blood of Jesus 
and the voice, the believer's voice, that we will not be silent. We lift our voice that Jesus is the answer and the, the ultimate injustice on the cross where Jesus was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. So what happened on the cross? And so Jesus looks down to see the affliction, hear the cry of those who have been afflicted. And you can talk about uh, black people or, or you can talk about other other people. I mean, uh, in our family, you've got uh, Indian or mm -hmm. American Indian or yeah. Native American. The Jewish and people. so then mm -hmm. you look at the Jewish people mm -hmm. throughout history. And so people have been afflicted, but the spirit of faith is a voice in a generation that says, look to Jesus. He is the author. He's the finisher. He is the one that went through the cross, despised the shame, and now he's seated at the right hand of God. And you know, he, he's not just sitting up there doing nothing. He ever lives to make intercession for us. He is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He prays for us. He supplicates for us. In this uh, Psalm 116, just a couple verses down from where we were, in verse 15, it says, Precious and important and no light matter in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints, His loving ones. And so, you know, uh, it's costly. It's precious. You know, this death that just happened. And George Floyd. Uh, it touched the heart of Jesus. Yeah, I mean, he was uh, crying out. And so his voice and, and his speaking. death literally will bring change to America. And I realize the looting and the cruelty and all that stuff, but I'm talking about the, the good change that will come because of his death. And he will kill more of the enemy in his death than he ever did in his life. He will bring some justice and bring change, not only to Minnesota, Minneapolis, but that one guy, my Lord, he's changing our generation because uh, governments have to change the way we see people and treat people, mm -hmm. police departments, and learning to love everybody. And wow, think about that. And, and what, the first church that, that we pastored, we even had the, the KKK come and burn a cross in the front yard of the church because we decided we were going to be an interracial church. Yeah. We're going to reach white people and black people Mexicans and Hispanic and the, people yes. and Asian people. And did you know some, some, uh, some radical groups, the KKK, man, they said, we don't want that in our community. And I even lost white people that left my church because our church became fully interracial. Jesus died on the cross for <laughs> everybody. We yes. love everybody, yes. rich and poor, educated, uneducated, no matter what color the skin is. Come on, Jesus is Lord. And so the righteous cause, I can't help but just think what would happen in some of these worst areas if they would get a church choir together and just got out in the middle and just started singing about Jesus. Man, you're talking about devils and demons. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? For the past uh, weeks, you know, churches have not assembled. Choirs have not assembled. And that may be part of the problem. And Yeah, but our weapons that are mighty through God to pull down these strongholds are released from our voice. And the voice of song and worship mm. and praise, it just lifts up a clear highway to heaven. The voice of the blood. And makes yeah. a way, uh, it's a channel, a portal mm. from heaven to earth and earth to heaven where angels and the grace of God, the light and the love of God shine. Mercy begins to flow and wow. people's hearts is, are touched. So, I believe this can be a time of healing in our nation. Yes, at least the real problems are being exposed and they will be dealt with and justice will be served, but the ultimate justice comes from Jesus Christ and from God. God is a God of justice. He will not allow men to continue to do evil. In other words, the voice of the believers, when we believe and speak, when we pray, when we lift our voice, when we turn our eyes to Jesus, the influence in America right now, in our, in our nation right now, the, the church and the church has been subdued and the church has been, uh, oh, you can't go to church for two months. 
Well, you, you can, I guess you can't go to church for two months, but you can go right in all the streets to see if you can stop that. No, listen, the church, we must assemble. We must meet it's together. Time. We must sing together. We must pray together. We must praise together. And so the spirit of faith is a, is a team sport. It is a corporate yes. thing. A corporate thing. In other words, we together, we have the same spirit of faith, not just I have, we have. It is a team sport. It says when Jesus saw their faith, Amen. he said. So no doubt you individually have faith, but corporate faith is when we lift our voice together like they did in the book of Acts. Yeah. That's a spirit of faith. That's a spirit of well, faith. And it and changed it the nation. Changes. And there It'll was even shake. a king. There It'll was a king. The building. Yeah. A king that was making a speech. An angel yeah. came down and killed the king right in front of everybody. He got eaten up with worms. So heaven, <laughs> the spirit of faith, believes the unseen is greater than the seen. Amen. And, um, you know, it's not just one person with the spirit of faith. It's, in, I believe, the whole body of Christ infused with the spirit of faith, you know, in Second Chronicles 20, you mentioned the battle that they had there. They all looked to the Lord. And then it says, I love this uh, verse in verse 13, all Judah stood before the Lord with their children and yeah. their wives. Everyone looking to God. God, we need mm. help from you. Mm. Speak to us. And when we do that, the Holy Spirit begins to speak. Yeah. And he says, don't be afraid. Or, be dismayed because of this situation. God. The, God is with you. The battle is not yours. It is the Lord's. Yeah. And that but moment, the, they just looked But they did their to part, God. began to sing. Uh-huh. And they looked to God and they began to sing. And while they were singing and praising God, listen to that voice, a, a corporate faith. It says, the Lord set ambushments against their enemy. Right now, if you will lift your voice, Amen. and if we will lift our voice with a spirit of faith, through faith in God, through faith in the blood of Jesus, yes. through faith in the word and the promises of God, through faith in the name that's above every name, in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, we Praise lift our voices Amen. together. And so all of this week, we're going to be teaching on the spirit of faith. You can go to markhankins.org and we'll give you this book free or you can call our office at 318-767-2001. We'll give you this book free, The Spirit of Faith. Uh, one guy came into my church one time and heard me preaching. He said, man, you make me want to grab a corn stalk, swing out over hell and spit in the devil's eye. <laughs> I laughed. He was kind of a redneck guy. And I said, what? Uh, he said, grab a corn stalk, swing out over hell, and, and uh, spit in the devil's eye. That's pretty audacious. In other words, the spirit of faith <laughs> believes Jesus is Lord, and no matter what the enemy seems to be doing, we will not be Amen. defeated. We Even if we get knocked down, we're getting back up. Jesus is Lord. We believe and we speak. And in one place, the apostle Praise Paul said, God. all men forsook me, but the same night the Lord Jesus stood by me and strengthened me. Think about that. In every challenge, in every adversity in your life, the spirit of faith, I believe Jesus is Lord. I believe and I speak. I lift my voice and then I find my four crazy friends. <laughs> in other words, corporate faith, four crazy friends that will dare to believe God. So I encourage you to get the book on the spirit of faith while you're there at the website, just download uh, some of the messages on faith and you'll catch the attitude of faith, the spirit of faith. I believe it and I speak it. And the apostle Paul says there in second Corinthians four, he says, um, though my outward man is perishing, my yeah. inward man is renewed, renewed day by day. So that lets you know the spirit of faith is not something you just get on Sunday and you carry it to the next uh, yeah. Sunday or the next month. Every day we renew our inward man and the spirit of faith every single day. While we look not at things that are seen, but at things which are not, not seen. seen. Things that are seen are temporary. Mm -hmm. Things that are not seen are eternal. We'll get into that tomorrow.
Hallelujah. Ooh, that's going to be good. <laughs> so I can't wait till tomorrow. <laughs> All day this week, the Spirit of Faith book. Yes. And we encourage you to be a partner with our ministry, Mark Hankins Ministry. If you are a partner, we tell you thank you so much. We look at every gift, every offering, every seed that is sown, every check. Me and Trina look at it. We lay our hands on it and pray for you because God said he will multiply your seed that is sown and he will make all grace abound towards you. So you're sowing into the teaching and the preaching of the gospel. And Galatians chapter 6 and verse 6 says, if you've been taught in the word of God, he says, you share all good things or communicate, share all good things with who is teaching you the word of God. And so he says, if you've been taught, you've received significant inspiration and blessing. Then he said, you say, Lord, how can I help that ministry? They've helped me and I'm going to help them. And so when you sow a seed, so you can mail a check, you can give on the website, you can uh, text to give, all kinds of ways you can give. And if you just give in one time or if you give every month, as a partner with us, the scripture says that God, because of your partnership, Paul said, my God will supply God's all supply. your needs. So being a Praise faithful God. partner, and I tell pastors and preachers that preach, uh, you know, to the, the ministry things that they've learned, uh, when you are receiving that word and uh, then you give, then you're saying that word changed my life and I want to be a blessing and I want to be a significant blessing in proportion to the revelation of the word that, I, that has changed my life. And so we thank you for being a partner with us. Some of you given every week, uh, your ministry, some of the churches and pastors. And also we thank you so much uh, for being a monthly partner with us. And during this time, wow, what a great time to sow a seed into the answer, which is the gospel of Christ. And so you help us. You can see the big picture here of what we're doing around the world and preaching the gospel. Last week we were preaching live stream four times in Kenya, in East Africa. The spirit of faith is strong in Africa. Yes. And then you help us translate, distribute our books in many different languages. Watching Mark Hankins Ministries Faith for Every Nation. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. The spirit of faith opens the door to the supernatural, enables you to receive from God and fulfill your divine destiny. God is a faith God, and without faith, it's impossible to please Him. In the Spirit of Faith book, Mark Hankins shares valuable truths, such as how to win the war of words. Faith is an act. The simplest definition of faith is acting like the Bible is true. Never run to your giant with your mouth shut. The Spirit of Faith is a pioneer spirit. It enables you to advance, break barriers, and go into new territory. When you order this book, you'll also get Faith 2020. In this four CD set, you'll learn the importance of exceedingly growing faith. Faith is the victory, the good fight of faith, and cure for unbelief. If you're silent in 2020, you'll lose by default. So lift your voice and say something. When you order this special faith package, your gift of $25 or more will help pastors Mark and Trina Hankins train pastors around the world. Order today by calling 318 767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you again for joining us on the program today. I hope you were inspired and your faith was strengthened. Today, I want to encourage you to get this book, The Spirit of Faith. I have personally read this book multiple times and I've encouraged other people to read this book because, you know, there's a time in your life where you feel like your faith may seem dull and your, and your faith just feels like it's not working and, and you just, you get tired. But when you have something like this that you can pick up and read and it encourages you and it says, hey, don't stop fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting the fight of faith. You can do it. You can win if you don't quit. That's what this book does. Something else this book has done for me is it also has encouraged me that no matter what it looks like, anything is possible if we believe. Anything is possible. Anytime I pick this book up and I read it, I'm like, why am I not believing God for more? Because this book inspires you to really, really believe God 
for more. There is so much more that God wants to do for us, but we set our own limitations on Him. But He is an unlimited God. There is nothing that He cannot do. So I encourage you today, get this book. It will inspire you. If you're in the middle of a fight right now and you need something to just give your faith an extra push, get this book. It will help you. If you have a friend that's struggling in their faith or they don't understand how to use their faith, get this book. Give it to them. It's the best gift that you can give. It's a gift of a spirit of faith. So I encourage you to get this. The information is on the screen and everything you need is right there. So you can give a call or you can go on the website. Again, this is Alicia Hankins Moran with Faith for Every Nation. Thank you for joining us and we hope to see you again. We connected uh, with Pastors Mark and Trina Hankins a few years ago and it was through our administrator at the time. She went to a meeting in Albuquerque and she came back uh, with Mark Hankins material, Mark and Trina Hankins material, and uh, we feasted on those uh, teachings and recordings and books. And uh, we were trusting God at that time, month by month, to keep the doors of the church open. And so when our administrator went to their meeting, it was a time where my wife and I, we were just trusting God to keep the doors open. It was a very challenging time for our church at that time. Uh, pastors Mark and Trina, uh, they did not know us. Uh, we did hear about them, but they did not know, know us, but the Lord put in pastors Mark and Trina to send material through our administrator to us for free. And it was a significant amount of material. Well, we read, we heard, and when they came the very first time to our church, after that meeting, a breakthrough occurred. And when that breakthrough occurred, now, you know, being a partner of Mark Hankins Ministries has caused us to increase the way they're increasing. Um, we witness perpetual increase in the ministries or in the ministry of pastors Mark and Trina Hankins. Mark Hankins Ministry, we see the ministry as a ministry of increase. They're increasing on every level. And that has impacted our church, our ministry, to, to, to increase in that same way. As they're increasing, we're increasing. And as we're increasing, they're increasing even greater. And so there's an exchange of increase that happens in partnership on a level that is supernatural. The, the power of partnership is really a supernatural thing. And when we're spiritually linked together, that connection, they pray for us, we lift them up in prayer, we sow, and as a result, there's an exchange, they give us material, and of course, the Bible College has been a tremendous blessing, but it has all happened because of partnership. Uh, we are partnering with a ministry that operates in the supernatural. And to be connected to a ministry that operates to the supernatural, that causes our church and ministry to operate in the supernatural as well. Mark Hankins Ministries is a blessing to Faith Bible Fellowship of El Paso, Texas. Mark Hankins Ministries is now starting to become a blessing in Juarez, Mexico, and in nations across the world. And it is our honor and our privilege to be connected to a ministry that operates under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries Faith for Every Nation. 